Please stand for opening hymn in 379.
Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those many trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. The Apostle Paul writes to the Romans, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus himself gives us this comfort. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. Whoever lives and believes in me will never die. We continue with the response of reading. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then we also will appear with Him in glory. We will be before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. Never again will we hunger. Never again will we thirst. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be our shepherd. He will lead us to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. Let us pray. God of all grace, you sent your Son, Jesus, to destroy the power of death and to open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we too shall live. Comfort us with the promise that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, shall be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our first lesson for our meditation this morning is found in Isaiah chapter 40, reading verses 1, 2, and 9 through 11. These verses are uh, a message to the people of Israel who have been struggling because God was punishing them for their sins. And so now God is telling them that the time of comfort will come, that no longer will he hold their wrong against them, but instead he says that he will bring them back. He will tend them like a sheep or like a shepherd cares for his sheep. And as we hear these words, we too are comforted by our Lord who loves us, just as he loved his people Israel. Our Lord who cares for us, who shepherds us, and who promises us comfort and peace, for he also has forgiven our sins. We read from Isaiah 40. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem, and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power, and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the, lion, the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have him. This is the word of the Lord. Our second lesson for this morning is found in Revelation 7, verses 11 through 17. These verses talk about the heavenly comfort that God's people have. So yes, God comforts us here on earth. He certainly cares for us, his people. But it doesn't really compare to the comfort that his believers have who are brought to the heavenly home. There, God tells us that there is no more sorrow, no more tears, no more hunger, no more thirst. None of the trials or troubles that we deal with here on earth. Because there, God is their shepherd directly and cares for them. We read from Revelation chapter 7. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, 
Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. And He who sits on the throne will shelter them with His presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Our third gospel reading is uh, found in Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 through 30. In these verses, Jesus himself invites us to come to him and to receive the rest and the comfort that only he can give. A rest and a comfort that is beyond just the rest of our bodies, but a rest for our souls as well. Our Lord Jesus, who is our Savior, he can do this, and so we eagerly come to Him with our burdens and our sorrows. We read from Matthew 11. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with our second hymn, hymn 411. The hymn is found on the overhead screen. You can also find it in the hymnal in your pew. Uh, it is hymn again 411. <laughs>
Grace to you. Again. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for our meditation this morning is our Gospel reading, Matthew chapter 11, reading selected verses. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. In the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, especially Eugene and the family and friends of town, the word rest is certainly a positive word. Rest is something that we often seek out. It's something that we know that we need, and many days we look forward to it. So as we think about Jesus and his invitation to rest, and as we think of Tom now at rest, there is a, a bit of good thoughts there. Tom needed some rest. We think of all the things that he was going around to, whether it was dialysis or doctor visits or treatments. We think of how he often needed to sit down and rest after a bit of exertion because he was out of breath. Now all of that is done. He's at rest now. Eternal rest. But it isn't just the physical rest that Jesus is talking about, that he's inviting us to come and receive. No, the rest that he gives is much deeper and much greater than any sort of physical rest that we could ever look for. Today we consider that as we consider our theme, Jesus gives rest to souls in heaven and to hearts today. As we think about the rest that Jesus is offering, especially at a time like this, it can lead us, hopefully, to think about the rest that our troubled souls need as well. Because even as we can see a passing like this as the granting of a physical rest, such preparation for something, especially as we gather around and consider our own mortality as well, might not lead us to be restful in our minds or in our hearts. And the reason for that is because we understand that when the time comes, we'll be standing before God. We'll be standing before God and He's going to take a look at our lives. He's going to ask us if we've been spending our time serving Him or serving ourselves. Have we been obeying His commands? Have we been keeping the Ten Commandments? Or have we stumbled now and again? And as we think back on our lives, Certainly there are many things that we can say we're thankful for, joyful about. We can think of the family and the friends and all the blessings, and truly they are blessings. But there's also a lot of things that we look back on and regret. The people that we've hurt. The things that we should have done that were good that we did not do. The things that we shouldn't have done that we did do. To finally stand before the God who judges us, who knows us, who can see through us, who understands every motivation, who isn't going to allow an excuse to sway him, whose word is final. This can cause our hearts unrest. And this is why Jesus invited us to come to him. He said, come to me. You who are weary and burdened, come to me, whose souls maybe aren't at rest, whose consciences maybe aren't at rest. Come to me, I can give you true rest. The rest that comes from sins forgiven. Jesus invited us to him at this time because he knew what he was going to do. We, of course, look back and know what he has done. Jesus 
by His love and in His grace, came to earth to be the sacrifice for our sins. He came to earth to be punished for the wrongs that we have done. In a way, He confessed to our sins. He said, I'll take the blame. I'll be punished. And He was. On the cross, Jesus suffered and died for every sin that was ever committed. All of our wrong, unkind words, all the times we've hurt another, all the times we left someone else in need of help. Jesus paid for them all. And that is the rest that He promises to us. He tells us, you're going to stand before God, my father, and you're going to stand really before me, says Jesus, to be judged. But don't worry. Don't be afraid. Because those sins that you've committed, they've been wiped away for my sake. All who believe in me can be assured that there is peace, that there is eternal life. And I think of that rest as I think of the last time I was blessed to be able to see Tom, it was in the parking lot at church. We offer a service over the radio and then communion. And I think of that assurance that I was able to give to him personally. Take and eat. This is Jesus' body. Take and eat. This is Jesus' blood for your forgiveness. Go in peace. Your sins are forgiven. What rest? he was able to have for his soul. To be able to go home knowing, assured again that his sins were forgiven, that when he stood before his God, there would be no fear of punishment. There would be no dangers of how his Lord had forgiven him. And he would be welcomed into the eternal rest. The very rest that we read about in our second lesson, where the believers are pictured before the throne of God and God himself caring for them and wiping away every tear. What a blessing. What a comfort. To know the spiritual rest that God gives. To know the physical rest that God gives. To know the eternal rest that God gives. And it is that confidence that we have in the Lord's rest that brings us here today that leads us to gather around His Word to remember what Jesus has done for us, not just for Tom, but for all of us. Because Jesus, yes, He is a God who is eternal. He is a God who gives life to the dead, who brings souls to heaven to be at rest with Him, but He's a God who is also the God of the living. And He assures us that He has rest for us as well. Whether it's the rest that comes from sins forgiven so that we too can look ahead to the eternal life that is ours. The rest that comes from knowing that the separation that we are experiencing from our loved one is a temporary one. It lasts only as long as our lives or until Jesus comes again. And then Jesus will reunite us with himself and all believers in heaven. There's that eternal assurance and that comfort that He gives us. But there's also the rest that comes each and every day from knowing that we have a God who loves us and cares for us too. There will absolutely be days of sorrow and challenge ahead. There will be our good days and our bad days. We'll have our own physical struggles and our struggles with sin and the results of sin. But with a God who loves us, we know that He will get us through those challenges. We know that He's there with His love and His forgiveness when we fall. We know that He's the God who loves heaven and earth so that He can use challenges for our good and promises to do that very thing. And so as Jesus invites us to come to Him, I echo that. Go to Jesus. Bring your prayers. Bring your hurts. Bring your requests, your sorrows your doubts, your fears, bring them to Jesus and lay them there at His feet in trust. Knowing that He will care for you. Knowing that He loves you. Knowing that He will give you rest. And so continue to be drawn to a loving God. 
Your loving God who promises rest. Rest for those who have been called home, who believe in Him, who have the eternal rest of heaven. And rest for us too, as He soothes our troubled consciences through the promise of forgiveness. And as He continues to cast away our doubts and our fears as He promises to love and care for us in this life as well. To Jesus be our glory. And to Jesus may we be drawn. Amen. And the peace of God which transcends all human understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Having heard the word of God, we confess our joint Christian faith, the faith that Tom lived, and the faith that he certainly continues to keep in heaven according to the Apostles' Creed. Let us make our confession together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We also join together to pray the responsive prayer. Almighty God, we praise you for the great company of saints who have finished their lives in faith and now rest from their labors. We remember especially our loved one, Tom, whom you have redeemed by the blood of your Son and received as your dear child through holy baptism. We thank you for giving Tom to us as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your compassion, comfort all who are sad in this hour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you for your love in Christ, which sustains us in life and death. In our earthly sorrows, help us find strength in the fellowship of the church, joy in the forgiveness of sins, and hope in the resurrection to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You do not leave us comfortless, but strengthen and care for us through your word and sacrament. You give us family, friends, and neighbors to help when there is loneliness now and in the days to come. Brighten our future with a firm trust in your promises and care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remove our fears and make us bold to pray with confidence as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please permit just a, a couple of brief announcements. Uh, following the service, the family is going uh, out to the cemetery here in town, so you're welcome to join them. Following the burial at the cemetery, the family is returning here for uh, a meal uh, in the lower level. So if you're not going out to the cemetery, you're certainly welcome to stay around here uh, while the family is there and uh, you can wait for the family to return and join them. Uh, I believe those are the announcements, so we close with the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with His favor and give you peace. Amen. We close with Him 579 Please stay.